Hi, boys and girls. Today we are going to be learning more about Henry and Mudge and learning about the vocabulary that you're going to be seeing in the story. So I am going to go ahead and share my screen so that you guys can learn more about um, the story. Oops, sorry. Of Henry and Mudge and the vocabulary words. So today's first word is row. And here we have a picture that's going to help us figure out what the word row means. We're also going to use the context clues. The chairs were all in a row to figure out what row means. Row means the number of people or things arranged in a line. So here you could see a row of chairs. Our second vocabulary word is straight. And here you could see a picture of her straight hair. It says Henry's sister has straight hair. If you look at the picture clues and the sentence, we know that straight hair is no curves, turns, um, no bends, so it's nice and straight. Our third one is the word flappy, and here you can see his flappy ears. A rabbit, that rabbit has flappy ears, said my parents. We know from the picture and from the context clues in the sentence that they're hanging down loosely. And if you think about it, flappy describes ears, so flappy is an adjective. Here we have the word weighed. And as you can see, there's a scale with some fruit in there. Our sentence is, mother weighed the vegetables. So if you think about it, using the context clues, you can find out that this is a verb. It's something you do. And you know it's a verb because they're going to place something on a scale. Our next word is drooled. Ooh, look at that dog drooling. The dog drooled on the floor when he saw his food. Drooled means that saliva is dripping down your mouth. Sometimes if you're really, really hungry and you see something that makes your mouth water like this dog here, you might start to have saliva drip down your mouth. We know looking again at this sentence in the context clues that drooled is a verb. And then that ED is an inflectional ending that tells us that this verb is taking place in the past. And then if we look at the word drooled, we know that the base word is drool. Our next word is stood. So if you look at them, they're standing nice and straight. So we stood up to say the pledge. Your teacher probably always tells you to go ahead and stand or in past tense, you stood to say the pledge. Again, this is a verb because it is something we do. This one here is curly. And we just went over the word straight. And curly is an antonym of straight. And curly is also an adjective that tells us more about the clown's curly hair. So looking at this sentence, the sentence says, the clown at the circus had curly hair. So it's not straight. It um, has curves or twists on it. So that was what curly means. The next one is collars. So if you look at these doggies here, you can see their collar. And it says both of the dogs had on new collars. So collars usually go around a dog's neck, around their um, neck, and then usually there's a little tag here. And it um, can be leather, it can be metal, it can be plastic. Um, that's a band that goes around your neck. 
Um, so those are the vocabulary words that you're going to be find, finding in Henry and Mudge. We also are going to be listening to a story called The Perfect Pet that has those same vocab words in there. So I'm going to go ahead and read you the story of The Perfect Pet and ask you some listening comprehension questions as we go along. So the title of my story is called The Perfect Pet. Carla didn't have a pet, but she loved to help her next door neighbor, Mrs. Stevens, take care of her cat, Sadie. Sadie had long, straight fur the color of butterscotch. She also had seven collars, a different one for each day of the week. So as you can see, there are two words that are highlighted here, straight and collars. Those are our vocab words that we're studying this week. Now I'm gonna stop after this first paragraph and think about some of the details that I just read in The Perfect Pet. I know that um, her fur is straight, long, and the color of butterscotch. I wonder what kind of pet it is and that she has a collar for every day of the week. So interesting, whatever kind of perfect pet this is, she has a collar on every day. That's different. Carla visited Mrs. Stevens and Sadie every day after school. First, she would comb Sadie's fur. Next, she would take Sadie outside to play with her favorite string toy. Then she fed Sadie her supper, and last, she always gave Sadie a big hug and a scratch under her chin. Again, I'm going to stop and think about this, and I'm trying to figure out what does Carla do after she feeds Sadie her supper? So I might go back into the story and look for the sequence of events. Sometimes there's clues like first, next, then, last, here I know that she gives Sadie a hug and a scratch under her chin um, after she feeds Sadie her supper. I wonder what kind of pet it is again. One day, Carla's mother said, I've noticed that you take such good care of Sadie, Carla. Would you like to have a pet of your own? Yes, Carla beamed. On Saturday, Carla and her mother went to the pet shop. Carla looked at a row of fish tanks. The fish glimmered with many beautiful colors, but Carla didn't want a fish. You can't play with a fish. A bunny with floppy ears stood in its pen. Carla tried to pat it, but it hopped away. You can't hug a bunny that hops away. And again, remember the, the floppy ears move up and down and stood so it's standing straight, the bunny is. Carla and her mother tried to find a pet for Carla at an animal shelter. Carla scratched a friendly looking dog under its chin and it drooled on her. I think I want a pet that drools, she says. So think about it, this pet, this friendly looking dog has spit that's kind of like dripping down his face, right? Then Carla noticed a cute puppy with curly hair. Again, remember it has bends in it. It liked to play, it liked to be hugged, and it didn't drool. Carla's mother asked how much it weighed. Remember weighing is an, um, a verb that we do, we would put something on a scale. She only weighs four pounds now, said the shelter worker, but she'll probably be over 80 pounds when she's full grown. Carla's mother stopped back. That's too much dog for our little house, she said. I'll never find a pet as wonderful as Sadie, Carla thought. Sadie is a perfect pet. Back at home, Mrs. Stevens was outside looking worried. Oh dear, she said, I just found out that I need to move in a few months, but my new apartment doesn't allow pets. What will happen to Sadie? Hmm. So thinking about this, why is Carla having trouble finding a pet? I think it's because 
she can't find the right animal for her. The animals don't compare to Sadie. And then I'm thinking to myself, what might happen? Uh, her neighbor has to move out. I wonder what's going to happen. Carla felt terrible for Mrs. Stevens. She wished there was some way she could help. Suddenly, Carla broke into a grin. Don't worry, Mrs. Stevens, she said. I know someone who could take good care of Sadie, and you can visit her whenever you want. So thinking about that, how does the story end? What happens to the perfect pet, Sadie? Well, Mrs. Stevens is pleased to find a home for Sadie. And Carla is going to be the one that takes Sadie. So it worked out for everyone in the story. All right, I hope you enjoyed that listening story and those comprehension questions that went along with our new vocabulary words that we're learning this week. After you feel good about the vocab words that I just talked to you about, I want you to think about, sorry, um, going, well, you're going to be going on Seesaw. And today's assignment is um, called Henry and Mudge Vocab Words. You are going to choose two words. Draw a picture of your word and put the word in a sentence. Remember to use capitals and periods. So you might choose row and you might choose drooled. So for number one, you could draw a picture of a row of something and then you need to put it in a sentence. And then if you chose drooled or whatever other word you choose, you would put it in the box, draw a picture, and then write a sentence. You'll find the instructions on the seesaw as well, so you can play the instructions if you forget what to do. Mrs. Holmes made some silly sentences to go along with it to kind of help you understand what to do. So I wrote, my silly dog has two tails, one ear, and likes to wear five collars on his body. And then I went ahead and drew a picture of my silly dog. And because I wasn't sure if my teacher would know what I meant, I went ahead and I labeled the collar. And then I underlined it, and then I stopped and looked for a capital and a period. My second word that I chose was drooled. So I wrote my dog drooled when he saw the juicy steak. And then I again went ahead and drew a picture of my doggy with his tongue hanging out and slobber coming from his mouth and he's looking at that juicy steak. All right, so boys and girls, that is the vocabulary this week for Henry and Mudge the listening story, and the seesaw activity that you are assigned to today. Have a great day. See you later.